Hey guy from New Plastic and today we'll use Photoshop's AI for some cool and unique bokeh effect in Redshift. I made a pack of custom bokeh images made this way which can be used in any engine which also includes a set of procedural bokeh effects for Octane only. It's very affordable so check it out on the New Plastic Gumroad store. It's a great way to support the channel along with getting prints and pins I made from the Pink Eye Gumroad store. And of course consider becoming a patron or a member so you can watch all these videos with no ads, get access to the project files, free products from the store, as well as other cool perks, but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all. Follow me on Instagram at Ojang or the channel at Brand New Plastic. Join our Discord, subscribe. Where's the Gabagool? Let's go. So I have the scene here with all this bokeh coming only from the HDRI, so we get quick response in the render view. I have a camera with pretty high focal length, which is more typical for this bokeh effect in real life, but since we only get it from the HDRI, I don't think it matters that much. We don't have any depth in this scene. And in the optical tab, our aperture is set to four, which gives us all this depth of field blur. Now, if I open the bokeh settings, we can select to have either a circular or bladed bokeh shape, or we can upload our own shape, which is what we're gonna do. So I'll go to the new beta version of Photoshop and I have a square 1000 pixel size canvas. We don't need to go too high with the resolution. On a black background, I'll just draw a simple shape, feather the selection a bit. And in the new beta version, we have the AI image generator here. So I'll just write something simple like dusty grain texture. And after around 10, 20 seconds, I have this, which is something. I can check out the other two options it gives me, but we can do better. Let's restore the selection and maybe write something like dust and hair overlay texture. And okay, this is much, much cooler. Really beautiful and subtle textures. I'll just scale it up a bit, save it. And back in Redshift, I'll upload the PSD we just saved. And that's cool. You can see we're getting this simple but imperfect shape to our bokeh. And we can still play with the aspect ratio to stretch the bokeh, which will imitate the look of an anamorphic lens. What I like about Redshift is that the exposure is normalized. So even if we have smaller or darker textures, it'll keep the same level of exposure if the normalization is set to sum to white. You can test out the unit intensity option as well, but if it's set to none, you can see our exposure goes down because our bokeh texture is a bit smaller and has some dirt to it. Let's keep trying. This time I'll use a shape, use spherized distortion to round it up a bit, select and feather, and let's just have fun with it. Maybe try something like black hole, chromatic aberration, stars abstract. And okay, this is cute. I can select one of these options and add more text here to modify it. So let's add grainy dust and see what's up. And yeah, ooh, some nice subtle details here. Let's save this one. Not bad. This has a more traditional look, but with some added flair. And you can see we're getting this unique purplish chromatic aberration on the edges of the bokeh coming from our texture. If I reduce the f-stop, we're blowing them up even larger so you can really tell. Yeah, this is really cool. Okay, let's just keep experimenting. Let's draw a really weird shape. Glowing edges, grainy microscope, texture, cellular noise. Okay, ooh, some of these are cool. Let's try this amoeba looking thing. Scale it up and maybe up the exposure a bit. Back in Redshift, sometimes I notice I need to force restart the render, but yeah, so, so unique. This is so much fun. Let's try just some abstract strokes and use this selection with something like directional noise, abstract line pattern, distorted, fuzzy, slight RGB split. Sick. Maybe without the RGB split. Okay, not much different, but really dope detail. So I can even duplicate this, choose another version and blend them together for some more detail. Yeah, so dreamy, huh? I really love this one. Let's just do a simple circle. Old grain texture, distorted Zeiss lens. I don't know, I'm really just testing different things. Okay, I mean, that's a no, but let's modify it with abstract glow highlight edges blown out. That's more like it. Let's test this one. Cute. I love how the color affects the bokeh. And we can even break it up further. Let's do three shapes and maybe abstract bokeh light leak fireflies. Ooh, okay. I'm curious about this one. My God, that's so trippy. This might be my favorite one yet. So yeah, I think you get the idea. You can make whatever you want, blend them together and just have fun with it. This is actually the first time I ever used Photoshop's AI tool. And I honestly think it's a really fun and quick experiment. I think what I really like about it is that you can kind of guide it to generate something. But at the end of the day, you're not micro directing every single aspect of this, but there's an element of surprise to it, which is really great. 
Okay, get the bokeh pack from my gumroad, check out the prints and pins I made on my other gumroad, consider supporting on Patreon, and big thanks to all my brilliant patrons and members as you see on the screen right now. I love you, have a great day, peace.